All right, so around not quite 100 minutes in, this is what we've got. It's very similar to this step in my instructions, right? I've still got some cleaning up to do on the outside edges. Not really, I got all the edges. <laughs> um, but this would be good enough to turn in, right? Because what are the requirements? Five, five or more elements composed together to create an original fantasy creature. Now, to do like the finished job, you not only want to make sure all those edges are clean, you want to fix any of those glaring issues, right? So I've got some glaring issues. I've got the chest of the seagull here, and I don't really love it. And I could delete it out, but then it gives leaves too much of the other thing. So I'm going to unlock everything just so I can play with it. Yeah, and I, I can't delete it out so well without little spots. And then I've got the grass that's on top of the foot here. And I've got a foot that's kind of blurry here. And I've got a little fluorescent green, you know, marking tag. So I'm going to show you with these new tools. We're going to use clone stamp, we're going to use dodge, and we're going to use burn. And we're going to use them in almost that order, if not that order. And so the first thing, let's just do the obvious. How can I fix the, uh, the internal edges that don't work, that don't blend? Well, I'm going to add to them. This is what I, I feel like you finish the car, but then there are like dents in it or gaps in between seams that need to be filled in. They, they make something called Bondo, which is like something you can spread on the car. It's like clay that hardens and you can sand it down and then you can repaint it and it's like nothing ever happened. So the tool that's like Bondo is the clone stamp tool. It's a new tool for us. It's about halfway down your tools underneath, underneath the brush. The description Photoshop gives it is it paints with pixels from another part of the image. And you can learn more and you can watch a quick video, you know, for a tutorial. We're going to use the regular clone stamp tool, the one on top. Its shortcut is just the, the S key. But clone stamp is incredibly finicky and weird to use. So you want to pay attention to the settings at the top. And we're going to set it not to affect the current layer. We're going to set it to affect all layers. And you're going to see what I mean. Okay, then we're going to use a brush just like we used for the eraser. It's going to be 100% opacity, a large size, 0% hardness. So before we know what the clone stamp does, we want to set our brush. We want it to be pretty large, about 100 pixels, just like we used our eraser. We want it to be a 0% hardness at 100% opacity. Okay, now I want you to create a new blank layer on top of every other layer you have. So I'm going to do that with a little plus sign. And I'm going to label that layer clone stamp, all in capitals. And then I'm going to mark that by right clicking by the eyeball and mark it red. This is our clone stamp layer. Because you don't want to get Bondo in the engine, right? It only goes on the top of everything. It's to correct it. So now only on the clone stamp layer, I'm going to use this tool. But if I click and drag like a brush, it will give me this warning because it needs to know where it's copying pixels from. So I hold down Option, and my cursor will change to a little crosshairs. And then I when, it's, when I'm holding down Option, I'm going to target what I want to steal from. I want to steal from this edge of the wing, and I'm going to paint it here. So I'm going to steal there, and I hold down Option and click. And now it targets it, and you'll see it will move those pixels to where I want to start painting. To, to add a new layer, you click on the little post-it next to the trash in the layer window. So I can keep holding down Option with the Clone Stamp tool. And I can target anything I want to fix, right? So if I want to target that and then paint it in here, I can do that. 
all with a soft edge. Now what's nice is this is all on a separate layer, so I'm not hurting any of the material underneath. But look how much that's helped to blend it in. So to target the, the area you want to clone from, you hold down Option and you click just once and then you let go. And then you'll see that you're carrying that with you where, wherever you want to paint it. I can help. All right, so the clone stamp, it can do a good job of kind of filling in the weirdness, and then it can always be erased out. You know, just like any other layer. Okay, now let's use it to fix the feet. So I'm going to make my brush a little bit smaller. And I'm going to make my clone stamp 100% opacity. I'm on my clone stamp layer. I'm just going to grab with clone stamp the option from over here and just move it to here. Get rid of that. You see that the, the clone stamp moves with you, travels with you. There we go. And what we're doing is we're using it in a non-destructive way because we're building it onto a new layer first. Okay, now I need to use the clone stamp to get rid of all of this eventually. If I don't get it in by the time I turn it in, that's okay. But I can use that to fix the feet. Though I think it would be better just to find new feet, but still. You can kind of see how the clone stamp works. The next tool I want to show you is dodge and burn. Now, in order to do this effectively, this is weird, but this is important. I'm going to turn off the background. I'm going to make sure all my layers are turned on and unlocked and then I'm going to hold option layer merge visible so that all of them are combined at the very top into one layer. What's great about this is I can use magic wand select around it select it and mask and just do one little delete to clean up any extra debris that I forgot. Okay, so now I've got this transparent layer. Now there might be parts I want it to be darker and parts I want it to be lighter. And there's parts I can clone stamp too. <laughs> so, for instance, I can clone stamp all of this because I don't want those really bright, weird feathers. Okay, but now I'm going to use new tools. So dodge... It's underneath the little droplet soften tool and burn. Dodge I'll use first. We only use it for the midtones. It's like using levels but with a tool. I'm going to take the exposure always less than 20 because it's really powerful. And then my brush is going to be large and 0% hardness. Okay, I'm going to use this at about 300 pixels and I'm going to paint highlights. Wherever I think it needs to be brighter in the midtones, on my combined layer, I'm going to add the lighting there, like on the top of the wings. Remember, this is on a duplicate of everything, because it's easy to overdo it. I'm not doing it everywhere. I'm doing it where I want the highlights. And we're going to be learning how to do this in a non-destructive way with our next project. But for now, it's a really good kind of spot check. So you can see the difference. This is without dodge. This is with dodge. Now I'm going to duplicate it again. I'm going to label that one I just did, the dodge layer. 
And I duplicate that, and now I'm going to call this the burn layer. And I'm going to use the tool that's in the drawer underneath Dodge. It's called Burn. Same exact kind of settings. Less than 20 exposure because it's really strong. Big brush, 0% hardness, only on midtones. You never want to burn your shadows. You never want to dodge your highlights. And now I'm going to put in the shadows where I think I need them. Now what's wonderful about dodge and burn is they only affect the pixels that are already there. So it's not like painting shadows. It's just deepening the tones that we already have. Now the problem with it is it can be really, really fast and strong. And you don't really realize what you're doing. So we do it on a copy. And then you can play with opacity and dim it down or even erase from it if you need to. Okay. Then any kind of final clone stamping you might want to do, I'm going to hold down Option, say Layer, Merge Visible. Now it's all on one layer, and I'll do some final clone stamping to fix things that bug me and fill them in. I can extend some texture. I can add it into other textures. I can add some of these feathers. Here, I'll do it at a low opacity. This is using clone stamp in a destructive way. It's actually replacing the pixels as I go. But I'm just doing really quick kind of spot checks. But you have tons of power and control this way. And of course, you can dodge and burn. If I want that shadow on the uh, on the wing. I definitely want more burn down in the armpit here. All right, the last tools that I don't usually need to use, but can be helpful when stuff is a little bit blurry like this foot, or the blur and sharpen tool. I'm gonna to use the sharpen tool in the same way. I'm gonna use a strength of less than 30. And I'm just gonna hit those areas that need a little bit more distinction, that look too blurred. Now are these perfectly cut out? No, but we gotta turn something in. So this is what we do. We have 10 minutes more of class. So let me show you how to submit now, now that we've used these tools. I'm going to turn off every layer except for that combined layer. And if I want to check it, I can turn on the gray. But I just want empty pixels behind it. Because we're going to save this not as a JPEG to put into Canvas. We're going to save it as a PNG so it supports this transparency. So you can check for little debris that you want cut out. But this will be our first step for our next assignment is really cleaning up and improving assignment two. I have two little holes here. I'm not sure how they got there. I'm going to fix it with clone stamp. I'm going to put it at 100%. Small brush. Just going to hold down option. Clone stamp over those holes. Yeah, there's a, there's a lot. I'm zoomed in at 300%. I said that was too much. Yep. So you turn off your backgrounds. I'm going to first hit Command S, update my PSD, and now I go to File, Save a Copy, and I'm going to save it as a PNG. If I'm in PhotoP, I want to export it as a PNG. I'm going to do it to the desktop so I can see it. And now I'm going to go to Canvas. And I'm going to go to my assignment where I should have my sketch. And I'm going to add to that post. I'm going to add my finished image. Which is here, this PNG. 
and the difference should be night and day because we did the image adjustment 